welcome to the last home group lesson on the circle maker. We made it. I hope these lessons uh, have been beneficial in your growth and relationship with Christ and helping you learn more and pray more effectively. In the last few chapters of this book, you will learn the importance of keep circling, as Mark Batterson puts it. He mentions how he hiked the Half Dome in Yosemite National Park with his son, and he did so one step at a time. And I've seen that Half Dome myself, and it's huge. It's a 15-mile hike with a 4,800-foot ascent, and it's no joke. From the bottom, you look and say, there's no way. But from the top, you say, there is a way. And that way is one step at a time. And that's what prayer is, one prayer at a time. You don't always get your answer right away, but you have to wait and depend upon God. So my encouragement to you in this lesson is to keep praying. It will be difficult, but it'll be worth it. Don't give up. Mark says, I'm not looking for the path of least resistance. I'm looking for the path of the greatest glory. The glory is not for us, but it's for God. When it seems impossible, that's when the impossible maker shows up on the scene. And when one asks, how can this happen? We can respond by saying, only God. While it's true God gets the glory, he allows us to have a part in bringing him glory. That is prayer. God intends to do something, but instead of just doing it because we know that he can, he allows us to pray so that he may release it through us. Prayer allows you to stay dependent upon a God who can do all things through our small things. Prayer is a small thing with great rewards. Your prayers can be great, but in comparison to who God is and his power, your prayers are small. But that's the mustard seed that Jesus was talking about. Your words in prayer, although compared to his work and power are small, he will, he will use his work and power to work through your lives so that he may get the glory. I just think that that is a beautiful thing. Mark goes on to say like this, when you live by faith, it feels like you're risking your reputation, but you're not. You're risking God's reputation. God is the only one who made the promise, and he is the only one who can keep it. Amen. So what is it that God intends to release through your prayers? While you may be depending upon God, God just may be depending upon you. Understand this. God isn't dependent upon us, but he is depending on us. He's depending on you to spend time with him so that he can lay things on your heart that he wants to release so that you may pray it so that he may do it through you. So in your family, in your job, in your church, your neighborhood, what is God depending on you to pray? Mark goes on to convey this thought through showing that prayer outlasts us. He uses terms like bottled prayer and ripple effect. Both terms relate to how when you pray, and if you don't see them happen right away, they are still held in the heart of God. I preached a message once about how it says in Revelation 5 and, and chapter 8, how the prayers of the saints go into, the, 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 those prayers go into a golden bowl to be poured out on the earth one day. He says it like this, I pray that you will make a difference while you're living, but I also pray that you make a difference after you die. And the way you do that is through prayer. Your greatest legacy is the prayers you leave behind. It's also your longest legacy. There is no expiration date on prayer. God will still be answering your prayers long after you are gone and the ripple effect will be revealed in eternity. Isn't that awesome? Do you see the importance of prayer and why God wants us to pray? Let me give you one more in case you don't get it yet. Mark also talks about how prayers are prophetic. He mentions how when you pray, your spoken words cease, cease to exist because they are subject to natural laws. 
You see, sound eventually dies. The sound waves that you speak in prayer, eventually they run out of energy. But when you pray, the words jump from the natural to the supernatural and they are sealed by God. I, I, let me give you an example. I can say, I wish you well. And the wishing will last about three seconds. It sounds nice, but it ends once the words run out of energy. But if I pray to God and I say, God, I pray, God, I pray that God will bless you and keep you and protect you. God hears that and he holds that. And when the timing is right, he acts upon that. That is prophecy. Speaking something now that will come into fruition later on. And that, my friends, is what prayer is. Praying now what will come into fruition later on. So I go back to my opening thought of not giving up in your prayers. Mark says we need to change our mindset about prayer from ASAP to ALAIT as long as it takes. So my encouragement is to pray, friends. Pray, 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 and keep on praying. May God bless you. I hope you have enjoyed our time together. And my encouragement to you is to enjoy your time together as you discuss these questions. Question number one, what chapter or lesson in the book or maybe some thought that sticks out to you from this home group teaching? Number two, have you ever hiked or climbed something that you're proud to say that you accomplished it? What was it? And how did you feel when you finished it? Number three, does prayer sometimes feel like climbing or hiking? If so, if so, in what ways does it feel like that? And number four, who would be willing to share a prayer request that you've been praying for for a while? My encouragement is to share those with your group. Number five, do you see prayers as prophetic? If so, in what ways? And number six, find one or more people in your home group who can agree with you in prayer. May the Lord watch over you and keep you. And, 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 and I pray that you would continue to be people of prayer, to not give up, to say that your prayers are prophetic and that God holds those prayers in the palm of his hand. God bless you.